On March 28, 1979, the worst accident in the history of the U.S. commercial nuclear power program occurred at Unit 2 of the Three Mile Island Nuclear Power Plant, just 12 miles outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The most feared reactor accident, a core meltdown, which the nuclear industry has continually assured the public could never happen, almost did happen. A recently released report of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's own inquiry group investigation into the accident concluded that the Three Mile Island plant came within 30 to 60 minutes of a full meltdown. In fact, the core inside the plant did suffer partial melting. What are the consequences of a nuclear meltdown? In the mid-1960s, the former Atomic Energy Commission reported that even though the chances of a meltdown were nil, should it ever happen, it would kill thousands of people outright from a lethal dose of high-level radiation, expose hundreds of thousands of people to low-level radiation, which would bring dramatic increases in leukemia, cancer, and birth defects within five to thirty years, and contaminate a land area, the AEC ironically concluded, the size of Pennsylvania for over 100 years. How much radiation have the people living near the Three Mile Island plant been exposed to? no one knows for sure. Metropolitan Edison Company, the operators of the plant, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission concur that the emissions at the time of the accident were higher than normal, but still pose no danger to nearby residents. One of the many scientists critical of the nuclear industry, Dr. Ernest Sternglass, professor of radiation physics at the University of Pittsburgh, states that the actual doses of radiation to critical internal organs were 30, to 130 times greater than reported by the NRC to the public. The report we are about to present is not about statistics and figures. It is a very personal one. It is the story of America's near catastrophic nuclear accident as told by the people who lived through it and who must live with its aftermath. It is a montage of voices expressing the human side of this traumatic experience, fear, anger, frustration, and helplessness. In commemoration of the first anniversary of the Three Mile Island accident, we present the following documentary program, Early Warnings, Voices from Three Mile Island. This report was produced by Robert Lepser in cooperation with WFCR in Amherst, Massachusetts. This documentary consists solely of interviews with local residents who live within a five-mile radius of the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This two-hour radio special was drawn from over ten hours of taped interviews conducted in January 1980. There is no narration or editorial comment. The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the residents themselves and are not necessarily those of the producer, WFCR, or this station. And now, early warnings, voices from Three Mile Island. A general emergency has been declared at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. The plant is operating... Some radiation by escaped into the atmosphere following an accident at a nuclear power plant near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. However, state officials say there is no danger to residents in the area. The plant is operated by Metropolitan Edison Company. A Met Ed official, Blaine Fabian, said there is no danger to area residents. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission here in Washington says radiation has been detected as far away from the site as a mile. A spokesman said control rods have been inserted into the nuclear core to stop the nuclear reaction, but added that it wasn't known if some part of the fuel might have evaporated, melted, or blown out of the core before emergency actions were taken. We've advised those who may be particularly susceptible to the effects of radiation, that is, pregnant women and preschool-aged children, to leave the area within a five-mile radius of the Three Mile Island facility until further notice. Many people in that region have been severely frightened, and the crisis is not yet over. It stands out on the highway. from another time 
It inspires the baby's questions. What's that? For their mothers as they ran. But no one stopped to think about the babies or how they would survive. And we've almost lost Detroit. Accident occurred around four o'clock in the morning, sometime around there on March the 28th, and uh, <clears throat> I was uh, sleeping and became uh, aware of this explosive release of steam Can over at the me? plant. It was a roar, a terrific roar. It woke me up, and I jumped out of bed, and I looked across the river, and I saw the column of steam that was escaping and it roared for about five minutes and then it stopped and then it started to roar again and the second time why it eased off until uh, there was just a uh, well relatively small column of steam that just kept hissing for near all morning I went back to sleep because the plant had erupted uh, about ten times before and I thought it was just a, an ordinary disturbance that we've been going through for the last uh, several years, but uh, and about seven o'clock when I got up, I heard uh, on the radio <clears throat> that there had been a radioactive release, and uh, then uh, I went uptown to get the mail, and I could sense a metallic taste when I got outside. In the air. In the air, yes, and then I. Uh, uh, Ask uh, uh, up at the marina uh, if the people up there uh, sensed this this taste, and uh, two of them did. Both said they could taste this metallic taste. And uh, then uh, after that, why a uh, helicopter uh, came in, landed up here in the field about 9:30. There was a uh, TV crew came down and. That was when I began to realize that it was pretty serious. I was uh, called by my civil defense director and so it told me it was an accident. Well, I just asked him, I said, well, what kind of accident is it, Butch? And he said, well, he said, all we have gotten so far is an on-site emergency. We had no concrete information that we could go on. <laughs> I <laughs> listened to, we had a, a television uh, set in our uh, communication center, and each channel gave us different information. We had a radio, and each station gave us different uh, information. You didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And then when I called the home office, and they told me that, yes, there was an accident, and tried to explain to me uh, just exactly what took place, and I said, well, look, I don't want to hear the uh, technical aspects of this darn thing. I said, because I don't understand it. I said, what about radiation? I knew that. He said, oh, no radiation was released. You don't have to worry about that. No radiation was released, and no one was injured. I said, great. So I told Butch, I said, well, look, I'm going back to school. If anything else happens, let me know. <laughs> Turned my radio on to the car, and the first thing the announcer said that radiation was released. I said, I just talked to an official from the plant. That was 11 o'clock in the morning. 4 <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon, the same man called me. And said, Bobby said, I'd like to update our conversation that we had at 11 o'clock. I said, are you going to tell me now that radiation was released? He said, yes. And I said, well, I guess we're in for uh, a lot of malarkey from you people. And lo and behold, boy, there it was. At 11 o'clock on the 28th, I didn't trust MedEd. I was at work. I heard a little blurb over the radio. There's been a release at Three Mile Island. No big deal. We've had these before. Mm -hmm. oh, this is routine. I didn't think anything about it. Oh, my family came. We were joking about it. I mean, sure it's all right to be here. Ha, ha, ha. And we got a phone call from my in-laws in Maryland. What are you still doing there? Aren't you coming here? What for? We've had releases before. 
So we're staying here. There's nothing to worry about. I really wasn't worried. The reports were very superficial and uh, uh, were presented in a way that wouldn't create panic. But I realized, with all the experience that I had with those plants down there, that something was very, very wrong. So I got home about noontime and I called State College. I knew some people up at State College had been in this thing for years. And I said, all right, tell me, what's going on at TMI? She said, Jane, you're not still there. I said, what do you mean I'm not still here? I'm calling you to find out what's going on. All I found out is there's something going on at TMI, but we don't know what. And she said, you better get out of there. She said, that plant is on its way down to a meltdown. I said, you're kidding me. She said, no, I'm not kidding. You better get the hell out of there. Well, here I was. I had to tell Joan and David and Jerry, he was milking. Here we had 85 head of cattle out there. We had the goats, the dogs, the cats. What in the name of God do you do?